Institute of Metabolic Surgery in Mumbai. I am Dr. Amrit Nas, a bariatric surgeon, and today we are going to discuss a very important disease related to obesity. Over the last few weeks, as we have been conducting one after another webinar, we have discussed so many important obesity-related diseases. We have done diseases in women, polycystic ovarian disease, liver diseases, bone diseases, heart diseases, and so on. But today we will discuss something even more important, and that is cancers related to obesity. Did you know there are so many cancers? Cancers of the breast, cancers of the prostate. colorectal cancers esophageal cancers and so on which are directly linked to obesity we never thought about it like that we always thought obesity was a lifestyle disease and if you the heavier you were the healthier you were it's not so there are a lot of cancers which will be thrown light upon by some of the eminent people from mumbai today so we have with us today dr adwani and dr raman goel who will be discussing this concept of cancers related to obesity our first talk today will be by dr adwani and he is a senior oncologist he is the director of the oncology medical oncology department at jaslo hospital he is also the former head of oncology at tata memorial hospital and he has numerous awards and accolades to his name ranging from dr b c roy award padma shri padma bhushan from the government of india and so on the list is endless so without taking any more time i would like to bring to us Dr Adwani sir please take over and enlighten us on the different cancers and their links to obesity over to you sir good afternoon first of all i must express my thanks to the organizers for giving me this opportunity topic which is so important to all of us we are really committed to the cancer cancer prevention cancer treatment and the cancer overall outlook and that's why our focus is on every aspect of the cancer now i'll show you the one of the slide uh, can you show the slide please kritika can you show the slide yes the slide has been shared should we move on to the next one no i can't see uh so the slides are visible uh, somebody from your side can set it up yes. okay fine so it has come now so here you can see that among the cancers there are many cancers which are preventable and i think uh, i really believe that if we take care of all these preventable cancers cancer will be almost half than what we are seeing look at it tobacco causes tremendous amount of the cancer the diet plays a very important role in indu- induction of various cancer and the obesity just count these three things you will find that 65% of the cancers can be prevented if we eliminate tobacco from our use if we modify and take only the healthy diet and if we prevent the obesity and overweight i think these are the things which are very 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 evident from this and i think it's a very important fact next slide the important thing is that uh, we know what does the obesity does to our body it affects almost every organ i think just now uh, amrit told you that you have been discussing various aspect of the obesity and look at it it affects almost every organ obese people have a really the preventable death due to the obesity whether it's because of the fatty liver and cirrhosis or whether it's because of the stroke or whether it's a heart condition and so on and so forth so you can really see that obesity plays a havoc to our body next slide and the something which have come up about the cancer is very clear on this slide that obesity is related to particular type of the cancer it is not that it affects every type of the cancer will increase 
not at all but particular types of the cancer are related to the uh, cancer and the obesity there is an interaction and so you can see over here that we have a meningioma which may not be a cancer but is a tumor growth and we have the ovarian or endometrial carcinoma we have the breast cancer and the pancreatic cancer which are related or uh, they are considered to be the obesity is considered to be the risk factor for developing these cancers next slide and therefore one could again see from this slide that uh, the breast cancer particularly the post menopausal breast cancer is uh, twice in the people who are obese rather as compared to the normal similarly the liver and kidney cancer they are also twice as compared to the lean person endometrial cancer is four times more what a impact it has got uh, the moment the patient walks in in my clinic in our clinic and he she is obese lady and we know that uh, we are dealing with a, a gynec problem particularly the endometrial carcinoma and similarly you can see the other cancer also to relate it but the endometrial carcinoma really gives you a very typical all the patients with the endometrial carcinoma they have a obesity they have a hypertension they have diabetes so every part of the obesity is clearly identifiable in these patients next slide so important thing is that up till now there has been tremendous amount of the research which has happened and we clearly now know that there is a convincing evidence for some of the cancers and for others still it remains probable one of the cancer which i told you is the endometrial cancer it is four times more in obese people irrespective of the age and if you have the early age obesity then the chances of endometrial cancer is still high similarly the post menopausal breast cancer not the pre menopausal breast cancer but post menopausal breast cancer is definitely twice as compared to the normal thin and lean person and of course other tumors also like colorectal cancer renal cell carcinoma so we have enough evidence to suggest that if we prevent the obesity we can prevent many of these cancers next slide so now we will see what is really happening i am sure you must have seen all these things before that how over a period of time the obesity is increasing not only in us and europe but also in the asian countries it is increasing definitely on rise if you ever go to uh, us you will find almost 50% of the population is overweight by just looking at them it's so and also i i must admit that whenever i go over there and we sit down and eat the lunch we laugh why we laugh because our plate is only about one fourth the full with the food as compared to the four times more for all the americans who are eating they eat so much even in the lab where i used to work the ladies they used to come the big cake and all and all the time they are eating they will take they sit take a breakfast after two hours they go for something to eat then they bring in the chocolates and the cakes they go on eating all day and they are so not conscious about obesity at all and here you can see that in us particularly one out of 3 adults is obese and even in children one in six children are obese next slide and you can also see that how they consume the junk food which is because of the marketing and that is associated with the obesity irrespective of the age whether it's 11 years or 20 years you you have equal chance of the obese in the particularly in the us next slide i think also the fact remains that as the nation becomes more and more wealthy the incidence of uh, the obesity increases and here you can see that from 1960 onwards 
the obesity incidence is rising both in the males as well as in the females from 1960 to 2000 the increase is really very significant so the obesity is going to give us the problem next slide and in terms of the cancer also how we judge that yes it is because of the obesity here you can clearly see that the cancers which are not associated with the obesity or overweight they have come down over a period of time many cancers have come down but if you look at them they are all, all not associated with the obesity and those who are associated with the obesity and overweight they are over a period of time from 2005 to 2014 they are increasing in incidence so i think this clearly shows a real link between the obesity and the cancer induction next slide now how does this happen why the obesity what obesity has to do with the cancer development i think obesity there's a lot of adipose tissue the fat is more as compared to the lean muscle mass and therefore it has got a lot of adipose tissue and all these adipose tissue bring about some sort of inflammatory re reaction and whenever there is an inflammation there is a excess of the insulin production and ultimately people develop the insulin resistance so the level of insulin is very high in these people and also because the fat is more these fat cells are also producing the estrogen so you have more than double the estrogen in your body and all these two factors insulin insulin growth factors as well as uh, the estrogen can play a very important role in controlling the cell proliferation next slide here i can t show you that what happens really it's very clear that the normal cells they are all very well easily maintained you can see that they are control proliferation and control layering of the normal cells and when the inflammation occurs more insulin and it stimulates these normal cells when there is an increase lipids there are various uh, cytokines which are released from the adipose tissue they also stimulate these normal cells insulin signaling insulin growth factor receptors they are stimulated and of course the adipokines so all these things they stimulate the normal cells and bring about the change in the proliferation and you can see then that there's a irregular growth of the tumor cell or the cancer cell become the tumor cell and it loses the normal inhibitory power because normal cells they are uh, because of the contact with each other they try to maintain the balance inhibitory as well as stimulatory while here the cells become abnormal there is no inhibition and therefore they become uncontrolled and the, what is cancer is nothing but the uncontrolled proliferation of the cells so that's what is the cancer it is so you can clearly see what is happening to that next slide also at the level of uh, the cytoplasmic uh, mechanisms also there are definite changes which ultimately leads to the target uh, cells being transformed so you can see over here that in obesity there is a insulin resistance and uh, there is leptins and there is a tumor necrosis factor and il6 all these are stimulatory they have the receptors and uh, they go and stimulate these receptors like il6 receptor tumor necrosis factor receptors adipose sign uh, r1 and r2 receptors and similarly insulin growth factor receptor you can see now that how these chemicals which are over acting they stimulate the receptor and once the receptors are stimulated on the cell surface they bring about what we call it 
the chain reaction within the cytoplasm and uh, the from the surface the signal goes to inside the surface it travels through the cytoplasm and where does it go it goes to the nucleus the dna and rna there and it altered the cell proliferation and the death it also not only alters the cell proliferation but also it gives the cells a different migration capacity they can migrate in any place they want to and also they can invade the tissue a normal cells don't invade the um, side by side tissue but here they can invade so that's why the typical characters of the cancer in terms of migration in terms of invasion and in terms of proliferation are really induced all because the basic cause of the obesity so i think it's very important to understand next slide that what is a process of induction and here you can see that how the cancer is promoted in the obese patient maybe because of the endogenous sex hormones the insulin resistance and hyper insulinemia the adipo kinds and cytokines and of course the chronic inflammation which ultimately bring about what we call it carcinogenesis what is carcinogenesis is nothing but a process by which you stimulate or transform the normal cell into the cancer cell next slide i think uh, the important thing is again to understand that all these factors ultimately where do they act they act on the target cell and the tumor development occurs next slide so what i have tried to tell you up till now is what is the process by which obesity makes the patient cancer prone i think it's very important so if you are thinking about prevention to you must understand this and if you are able to understand that i am sure you will be able to guide the people to avoid the obesity which i am sure other my colleagues will explain later on so look at the endometrial cancer i said it makes you obesity makes you four time predisposed and uh, endometrial cancer is not a uncommon disease we see day in and day out is the sixth most common cancer in the women worldwide next slide and it is very clear that look at the facts that even mild obesity can cause doubling of the cancer risk moderate obesity four times there is also the called the central obesity which also increases two fold increase and the most important thing is that if you are early life there is a obesity the risk of endometrial cancer is tremendous so i think uh, you can really see that how the parents should take care of the children to prevent the obesity at the right age and of course later on also this has to be prevented next slide similarly here you can see that if you prevent the obesity 50% of endometrial cancer will disappear i think is a huge number which you can prevent by just controlling the obesity i think this is a most important factor which uh, all of us have to understand and i'm sure the awareness about obesity and its relationship with the cancer is almost zero in most of the people population even in us among the adults the awareness of this fact is hardly about 10% 90% are unaware they feel that the obesity is nothing to do with the cancer next slide breast cancer which amounts almost about one fourth of all the cancers seen in the ladies next slide and uh, you can see over here that uh, obesity causes almost 10% of the post menopausal breast cancer and 14% can be attributed to the obesity so again a big number here see when we say 14% what it means it means 14% of all the cancer post menopausal a huge number it's in lakhs and lakhs world over so 
you can really prevent so many number you can prevent or save so many lives next slide i must say that uh, particularly in the post menopausal th there's a increased risk and this is all hormone receptor related disease it is uh, uh, not those people who are using hrt it is uh, not affecting that and also it supports the hypothesis the estrogen must be a very crucial link between the cancer development and the breast cancer and uh, we all know the what i have told you already that adipose tissue play an important role apart from this that i have told you that how that obesity is linked how the mechanism of action and how the association has been observed the most important thing also which remain that even after you have treated the patient what happens to them i think this will be evident from the next slide that what happens to them obesity and survival after the cancer treatment is different can you believe it but it is real that people suppose the patient is uh, obese he has recovered from the breast cancer he has received all the treatment his chances of relapse is double in obese people as compared to non obese people so one of our important advice to all our patient following the completion of the treatment is don't put on weight and if you are obese reduce the obesity that's our instruction i tell my patient walk 5 kilometers every day after the treatment is over make sure about that do some yoga activity and all the activities which you want to do but make sure that your weight is under control i think this is very important and this is uh, irrespective of menopausal stage even the pre menopausal if they are fat they are more liable to have the relapse and you can see this from the next slide also but look at the survival in non obese patient a big number 557 patients were followed up non obese definitely have a better survival as compared to the obese people so i think friends what i have really tried to cover in this 15 20 minutes that uh, the obesity is our major enemy just like we are suffering just now from pandemic of the virus we may end up with the trouble of pandemic with the cancer because of the obesity so we have to be careful now we should not adopt the similar lifestyle as the people are living in us and europe the lifestyle which is full of energy they take so much of the energy within them that they are not able to cope up so we must use our own culture our own food habits which are so good i mean you go to some places like go to kerala and south you will hardly find obese people there are no obese people over there they are very hard working people they hardly eat any oily substances so you can see that we should adapt these habits rather than the habits from the usa and uk and therefore my sincere advice to everybody is that you guide your people guide your patient to make sure that they take the right diet and control the obesity or prevent the obesity by preventing the obesity you are going to prevent the large number of cancer which otherwise can affect the patient's life next slide thank you very much thank you, thank you dr adwani thank you so much yeah. i think you could not have put the message in a more clear way than you have about all the cancers and how obesity has an impact on the body in relationship to them one of the very interesting slides that i noticed was you were saying that how non obesity related cancers have started reducing 
and obesity related cancers have started increasing in incidence that is something to look forward to so as obesity is increasing even the related cancers are in- increasing uh, sir we will take questions at the end i'll just ask you one question before you go uh, is the in your practice do you feel that the longer the duration of obesity more the cancer like do young people who are obese at a younger age do they come up with cancers like endometrial cancers at an earlier age certainly i think this is very clearly seen that uh, we see in our clinic that people who are obese they are young when they come with endometrial cancer the lean and all they probably get the uh, uh, endometrial cancer at the age of 70 and 80 but fat people you can make it out from the right of fat they are eating and uh, enjoying themselves and they land up with uh, this trouble so i think there's no question that these are the things you probably don't need the statistics you can see them thank you so much sir i would now like to invite dr raman goel who is the director of center of metabolic surgery he is also the president of ihgs sir please take over your talk on bariatric surgery and its impact on cancers take over sir yeah. yeah thank you thank you amrit i think uh, it's an amazing discovery today when dr advani showed the, the first slide how many cancers are avoidable so i mean obviously we are talking of uh, obesity today but if you add obesity to tobacco alcohol physical inactivity i believe about 65 to 70% of the uh, cancers can be avoided and it's a humongous number because for the families the cost and the discomfort and the loss of their near ones is such a big issue so i think uh, i'm very happy that dr advani is here because he is an authority on uh, on cancer and so and he has made my uh, life easy because he has spoken so so much in detail about the mechanism how the obesity can causes cancer and how the risk can be reduced if we if we uh, uh, lose weight so greetings from our center for metabolic surgery uh i am uh, ramin goel and i am going to talk about impact of bariatric surgery on cancers now uh when we started doing bariatric surgeries about 20 years back everybody thought that it's like a cosmetic surgery and people would not get it done unless they are 170 180 kg or more and then they were the difficult cases to begin with but now we have come to a situation where we have realized and it's evidence based that if a uh, timely bariatric surgery is done not only treats diabetes sleep apnea blood pressure reduces stroke reduces kidney failure but it also reduces something like cancers now this had always been on, on the fringe of bariatric surgeons so when we were talking of we taking talks with family physicians and other surgeons the cancer is just one slide and but today after listening to dr advani i believe this will occupy center stage because if 30% cancers are happening related to obesity and bariatric surgery can certainly help so in next few minutes a short presentation i'm going to talk about bariatric surgery and how it helps in cancer reduction or prevention so these are the indian guidelines and as dr advani has mentioned one of the important factor is raised insulin so the diabetics uh who have uh, who have who have high in who have insulin resistance in those patients we can do a bariatric surgery even at bmi of 27.5 primarily to treat diabetes these patients hardly lose 7 8 10 kg weight they don't lose 30 40 but on top of it the insulin resistance in one of the studies that we had published uh, when i was in bombay hospital in 2000 uh, it we did the study and published in 2011 the insulin resistance reduced by 90% within 6 months and if insulin resistance is the cause of uh, one of the cause of the cancers then it will certainly going to help just to show you two slides about the outcomes that are seen this is our own publication with amrit as the primary author that at one year Uh, patients have lost 87% of their extra weight with sleeve and 97% of their extra weight with the gastric bypass and even after 3 years 
the, their sleep patients are still lost 72% weight and bypass patients have lost 85% of their extra weight. It is substantial because if somebody has say 60 kg overweight, we are looking at a weight loss of almost 50 kgs uh, within first year and it is maintained long term. And it's not about weight loss. In another study that we did on, uh, on sleeve gastrectomy, five-year follow-up, we have shown that at three years, diabetes resolution happened after bypass less than 92% patients. So when we say resolution, that means these patients don't need any medicines for diabetes. They may need medicine for anything else, but not for blood sugar control. And even after five years with just sleeve, 64% patients don't need medicines for diabetes. This particular study was for sleeves. So that's why bypass is not there. So, so this is this is, goes to show that how the mechanism that, that applies for diabetes also applies for cancer. And we will discuss this a bit. There are multiple studies. Dr. Advani has shown it beautifully. But there are few studies which I, I have brought out. So after bariatric surgery, so what they did was they had two groups. One groups, meshed groups, obese patients, where they did bariatric surgery and they, in another group, they did not do a bariatric surgery. And they were followed for 15, 20 years because cancer uh, uh, cannot be diagnosed in one year of follow-up. And they found that in post-surgery group, the cancers were only in 2% of patients versus almost 8.5% in non-surgical group. And then they said that reduction in happens in all types of cancers, but maximum reduction in breast cancer, where it was in 1.6% of the patient in surgical patients versus 6.3% in non-surgical patient. So which is almost 25%, 75% reduction in cancer in post-bariatric patients. Now we come to specific cancers. So these are all evidence-based that there is significant reduction in all obesity related cancers but generally benefits are not seen in men and then they have shown that 42 percent reduction in melanoma which is a skin cancer and hematological cancers or blood cancers in women again this benefit doesn't accrue to men and then there is a another study which says that there is 14% reduction in cancer risk, especially breast, uterine, colon, and pancreatic altogether for every 10 BMI weight loss. So if somebody's BMI was 40 for surgery, it has come down to 30. The possibility of cancer reduces in that woman by 14%. But again, this benefit is not so much in men. So first thing that we need to realize is that cancer related benefit happens because of the hormonal issues that accrues. One of the men's cancer has been found that is the prostatic cancer which also benefits but primary benefit happens in women and this is study which was done uh, published in 2014. They followed 1 lakh patients who had a bariatric surgery compared to 1 lakh patients who did not have bariatric surgery matched groups and they found after bariatric surgery, 400 of them had cancer compared to almost 1400 without bariatric surgery. This is again a long term follow up study and which is which is quoted repeatedly. So I think this this goes on to show and uterine cancer on the endometrial cancer as Dr. Advani was quoting. Now, what are the mechanisms of cancer improvement? Obviously, weight loss is one. And then the metabolic changes that happen that the insulin levels go down and the cancer promoting factors also go down and that leads to the to the improvement in uh, the cancer incidence after surgery now again uh, it's almost the same uh, study as what dr advani has quoted that obesity and abnormal glucose metabolism leads to worse prognosis so if somebody is obese and develops cancer the survival is less and the recurrence is more while bariatric surgery if it is done, then in cancer survivors, so if it is done in cancer survivors, it also leads to successful weight loss. So it may not help them afterwards. So if somebody had a cancer, they have survived, but they are still overweight and bariatric surgery is given, offered to them, then it also leads to successful weight loss. Now, what are the various factors which can 
affect cancer prevention obviously gender is probably the most important <laughs> because it is seen that these are hormone dependent cancers like breast cancers or uterine cancers and in men it's mostly the prostatic cancer which is affected there is no substantial so there are different studies one the mostly people say that there is no relationship with the amount of weight loss while other studies which i have already quoted is that if there is a 14% cancer reduction for every 10% bmi weight loss bmi loss and then again there is no difference between different types of surgeries so whether somebody does a sleeve gastrectomy or undergoes a gastric bypass the benefit on cancer is the same so it's more metabolic changes which happen in both surgeries uh, which leads to uh, improvement in cancer uh, reduction in cancer risk now besides this it has also been seen in this particular study where there were 72 women who were more than 40 bmi they were offered either a bypass or a sleeve and they found uh, in these patients reduction of endometrial proliferation markers and in 10 women at the time of surgery they did a biopsy and they found four of them having endometrial carcinoma early carcinoma and six of them had atypical hyperplasia out of these six patients five of them the 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 hyperplasia uh, uh, reduced or resolved after bariatric surgery so so this is very important to realize that even patients who are in a early stage or pre malignant condition uh, can improve after bariatric surgery now there are as far as cancer prevention is concerned now every patient doesn't develop cancers every person doesn't develop cancer so it has been established that if somebody does 71 bariatric surgeries then it will avoid one new cancer so that means if our program is doing 250 surgeries a year we are practically avoiding three new cancers in this city of mumbai or wherever the patients are coming every year because they they, they are benefiting so friends cancer prevention is a added benefit of bariatric surgery is not a primary target a surgery cannot be offered to somebody only to prevent a cancer bariatric surgery cannot be offered to somebody but it is definitely offered for various acute things and this is a this is a collateral advantage that uh, you know the person can have a benefit in terms of reduction of cancer so to reduce cancer risk as dr advani said bariatric surgery should be considered at a younger age because already the 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 changes start happening at a younger age so uh, so so the benefit of the bariatric surgery especially accrues to those where surgery is done at a younger age now there is no 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 line drawn that you know you should do surgery before 40 or before 20 but it goes on to show that earlier the surgery is done the better the benefit in terms of cancer prevention uh uh to conclude my slide i'll just show you uh two uh, this this is uh, this is a senior lady whom we operated severe diabetes obstructive sleep apnea blood pressure and uh, was 92 kg and is about 62 kg after surgery and this young boy who was uh, 144 kg and within a year has come down to about 69 kg so th so the the change is so substantial and obviously we cannot have pictures of people who have cancers but because it is a very long term follow up that is required but bariatric surgery does help people in substantial weight loss metabolic changes and in turn which will lead to reduce cancer risk uh, one uh, caution that i would like to uh, tell everybody that post successful bariatric surgery don't think your cancer risk has completely gone cancer risk reduces to that of a healthy normal weight person and it is not completely eliminated so whatever cancer prevention or screening recommendations are there on the city wise or nation wise and who knows it better than dr advani and we'll probably talk to him later on in the question and answer session they must be followed just because somebody had bariatric surgery do not think that you are cancer prone or you are shielded from cancer your higher risk of cancer 
has been reduced to that that of a normal fit person and now now you should uh, live your life normally so thank you so much and i'll be very happy to take questions amrit amrit you are muted thank you goel sir thank you so much for the enlightening talk showing very clearly how weight loss after bariatric surgery has such a lot of benefit in reduction of risk of cancer thank you for your talk we have a lot of questions so i'll try to cover as many as possible uh first one for you goel sir uh, this is not to do with prevention so if someone has had a particular cancer can they undergo bariatric surgery for weight loss yeah so there are two things and one of them is that if somebody has cancer and is obese should we do the surgery on a urgent basis no so uh, cancer treatment deserves priority and must be done and only when the person is a cancer survivor and is established as a cancer survivor then you can you, uh, one can think of doing surgery yes we have also operated on many patients who are cancer survivors and where the oncologist says that now now this person can be offered bariatric surgery and the risk of can, uh, cancer recurrence is not very high and the person has been cured or is in remission of cancer that is the time when we do a bariatric surgery yes thank you sir so uh, one question for adwani sir so it, we know that there is some amount of genetic susceptibility to obesity so if the parents are obese it is likely that the children are also going to be obese so are these people also prone to cancers so like obesity has some genetic predisposition do these cancers related to obesity also occur in the children and if is it so what measures can be taken to avoid so you are muted sir yeah obviously the cancer is a multifactorial disease it's not a single factor related obesity is not the only factor which predisposes to the cancer there are so many other acronomen diet and uh, the habits uh, the way you live uh, everything is a multifactorial and uh, genetic is also one of the important factor definitely it's one of the most important factor there are very uh, few recognizable gene defect like we know brca1 and brca2 these two genes they can have a predisposition to the cancer development that is very well known established fact i'll take it now the question of diabetes and uh, obesity again i'm i'm sure obesity in the family also must be multifactorial it can't be single factor that the father or mother is fat and uh, obese and therefore the children are no it's nothing i mean that the food habit in the generation is same their activities are same and therefore everybody is fat so i think uh, you cannot really split these things uh, if you are obese whether it's uh, in the family you are running it's related to the something uh, genes may be very possibly related to that but i think it's a multifactorial both cancer as well as obesity both of them are multifactorial okay thank you sir yeah also you wanted to add to that yeah so basically the thing is uh, dr advani has very nicely mentioned about the cancers Uh, obesity is uh, again a multi genetic so almost more than 50 genes which are identified to cause obesity so whether those genes are common to cancer uh, particular cancer is very difficult because uh, to establish because it is not even established which particular gene has more major factor to cause obesity so when we don't know that then whether that particular gene is also seen in patients who develop cancer is i think this is a research in evolution and will probably have a an answer maybe 5 10 years from now uh, adwani sir is there any dietary advice for prevention of cancer so like one of your slides you said 30% of uh, cancers can be prevented by proper diet so what does that exactly mean yeah i think uh, 
the word I used in between during the talk, I did use the word healthy diet. No, nobody has a definition of what is a healthy diet. And uh, everybody has been grouping. And I just uh, sometime uh, I hate uh, uh, all these uh, people, so called uh, the nutrition people. Uh, they give the way they write the diet one morty of this, one morty of this at seven o'clock, nine o'clock, twelve o'clock. I say it's crazy. I mean, it can drive you crazy. So, the most important thing is to really adapt to a diet which we know that is healthy. You like if you see how the people, the cancer incidence, or even for that matter, obesity incidence is low before. And it is increasing day by day. Why is it obesity increasing? Why is the cancer increasing in there? It's because we are changing. And what are we changing? We are changing to the fast food. Very clear. You eat five fast food, there is a good chance of developing the obesity. There is a good chance of developing the uh, cancer. So I think these are all related to the diet. And diet means... Healthy diet. Healthy diet means good proportion of the fruits and salad. I strongly believe in that. That the, you know, with every meal you are eating, there should be one plate of the pure vegetables or the fruits or salad. With every meal, whether it's a lunch or dinner or breakfast, take one plate of the fruits. That's also very healthy. So, and also avoid, I'm not saying totally avoid the fat, fat uh, intake. No, eat, eat reasonable so that uh, you are not, uh, you know, don't put on the fat in your body. The most important thing is that you should avoid all these uh, fatty diets, which are responsible for increasing the adipose uh, fat cells in our body and uh, the at least uh, the average amount of the carbohydrate proteins and the fat in a respectable position you can really see so i think most important thing is the healthy diet and i think uh, if you want to see the healthy diet you should visit Kerala. i can tell you that you will learn how healthy diet they are eating, particularly in villages. Don't go in coaching. Coaching, they'll be eating everything. But you go to the village and you find out. Just see what they are eating. Hardly any fat. All low calorie food. Yes, and all the they have plenty of greenery, plenty of fruits, everything in plenty. So that's where you will really enjoy the healthy diet. Thank you, sir. Uh, one question for Dr. Goel. Uh, sir, for a bariatric patient, one of the things we were talking about was re reducing the risk of future cancer. But is there also, if suppose they do get cancer in future after bariatric surgery, is their survival better? So they have lost weight. So do they have a better survival advantage post bariatric surgery for yeah. any cancer? Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's what uh, Dr. Advani also mentioned that the, the the disease risk reduces and the survival advantage will be there because the uh, there, there are various parameters in this let's say the breast cancer which is the commonest so one is that cancer can be identified early so person where uh, or can person can feel the tumor early and it can be identified early and then the treatment can be offered early and the since the hormones are normal the possibility of survival is more. So I think uh, it's a combination factor and it's not related to bariatric surgery alone. It's also a weight loss issue. So ultimately we are talking of weight loss and metabolic changes. And if they are normal, definitely the survival advantage will accrue to the patient. Thank you, sir. I actually had a similar question for Dr. Advani, sir. Sir, do you feel uh, between obese and non-obese people, the detection rate is, or rather the chances of detection is more difficult? What technical difficulties do you face in management of obese people with cancer versus lean people? 
Yeah, I think there is a difficulty because, uh, like, I'm telling you, the chance of uh, detecting the best answer is definitely low in the obese people because there's sometimes a small tumor in the breast may be so deep that you can't feel it. While in a thin, lean lady, you can easily feel. They can easily feel. The patient can detect them. But in a fat people, they say they cannot feel anything. So that's, I think, there's a difficulty of early diagnosis. In their and even about their treatment and uh, the way they follow up, is this is the overall outcome worse if they were on the heavier side? Yeah, I think uh, uh, the problem comes up with uh, everything. Like for the surgery, they are high risk. Obese people are high risk for the surgery. They are high risk of catching the infection post-operatively. And uh, similarly, when it comes to the uh, radiotherapy also, there's a high chance of uh, lipid necrosis and producing a problem. And same way, even with chemotherapy, it's impossible to get their veins. We put the port and IV lines and then try and give them. But uh, the, another important factor which happens in the is the calculation of the dose. I think it's a phenomenal job to calculate the right dose for a particular patient who are obese because uh, you can give them either overdose or you can give them underdose and you don't know. I mean, there are some formulas there, there and there, but they are not real formulas. They don't calculate properly. So I think at every phase, there's a problem. That's, so that's very crucial to put up on one hand. The risks are more of getting a particular cancer and on the other hand, detection is harder and treatment technically there are so many pitfalls and challenges. Yeah. So just, I, I don't think there is any question left on that front. That definitely it is something that has to be tackled rather prevented than treated. Definitely prevention better than cure. Then. So one question for you, Goel, sir. Uh, one of the mechanisms discussed for obesity and cancer was insulin resistance. So do we extrapolate the same to even people who have only diabetes, who are not morbidly obese or who are diabetes and diabetics per se? Do we say even they are at a higher risk of cancer because they are also probably having from suffering from insulin resistance, which was one of the mechanisms? Uh, that, that's a tough question, really. So I think uh, uh, I don't have a, a specific answer to this question. Uh, it's not, a medical science is not all, always two plus two yeah. because there are multiple factors. And uh, because the insulin resistance is one factor and hormone is like estrogen is another factor. So uh, a morbidly obese person, the insulin growth, uh, the, the cancer growth factors are there and there are higher estrogen and that's why the benefit, the, the cancers are more in women, uh, these hormone related cancers and the benefit is also more in women. So I think uh, I don't have observation. Maybe Dr. Advani might be able to answer this. Does he see the same situation in lean diabetics? Advani, sir? Yeah, I think uh, that sort of linkage is not there. As I said, it's a multifactorial. So if you look at the obesity, it's not a, that it alters only one. It alters only the insulin resistance. Not, not at all. It alters so many things. So many things which we know and probably so many things that we don't know. Absolutely. But the important thing is the hormone. If you look at all the cancers which are related to obesity, they are hormone related cancer, breast cancer, endometrial cancer, ovarian cancer, they are all hormone related. And therefore, uh, I think uh, it's a multifactorial. So if you have only one factor, insulin resistance, maybe it will do not really that much of the impact. So you may not observe that thing at all. Uh, one other question for Goel, sir. Sir, does bariatric surgery increase the risk of any cancers? Like colorectal yeah. cancer is one okay. proposed. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Amrit, it's very straightforward. Uh, ideally, the risk should decrease. 
colorectal cancers are more related to fiber intake so if the fiber intake is less the risk of colorectal cancers are high one of one of the factors for colorectal cancers so what has been seen in some studies which have come after bariatric surgery that in absolute numbers the colorectal cancers are less but when they adjust it uh, you know statistical adjustments are done they find in some studies the risk of colorectal cancers in, indeed increased and it is mainly attributed to low fiber intake and that is a that is like uh, i'm not defending bariatric surgery but that is like saying that patients after bariatric surgery will have a more uh, nerve defi or more deficiencies now these are related to follow up if person is taking vitamins nerve deficiencies do not happen if person is having enough fiber in the diet the risk of colorectal cancer doesn't increase so there are uh, there are uh, studies both ways but yes uh, the only cancer where it has been found that the possibility is higher is in colorectal cancer and uh, the the only explanation major explanation that is given is that some patients despite being advised do not get enough fiber in the diet do not consume enough fiber in the diet and that can that can explain that and sir again i will bring the hormonal part uh, we have seen that most of these obesity associated cancers are because of hormonal changes the adipokines and we know that bariatric surgery kind of normalizes the hormones would you say that it is this hormonal change apart from the weight loss that has this prevention or preventive benefit for obesity cancer yes yeah, certainly i mean that is one of the mechanisms so we know that uh, adipokines which are like leptins and all uh, uh, play an important role and uh, once the those changes are reversed because of the reduced uh, cell the reduced sizes of the fat cells or adipocytes uh, it is likely to be one of the factors but nothing can be taken in isolation that is the key right so whether it's insulin whether it's adipokines whether it's estrogen or just weight loss all these factors play together a role to to reduce this risk yes thank you sir so one question for advani sir it's not to do with obesity it's more to do with cancer what tests do you recommend annually for males and females and at what age to rule out cancers common cancers yeah i think basically the screening technology only can detect at early stage and reduce the mortality because of, due to them if it is more common the rare diseases cannot be detected early diagnosis by any screening technology so the combination female is usually the breast cancer ovarian cancer and cervical cancer three common cancers in the female so for that after the age of 40 we advise the self breast examination examination by the physician and if necessary mammography or nowadays mri of the breast similarly for the cervix cancer we do regularly pap smear every year and that can detect very efficiently and because of that i think the number of uh, uh, cervical cancer has tremendously come down and i think simple ultrasound or sonography uh, can also detect the ovarian cancer at an early stage if it is done regularly so i think uh, in the females it's quite easy in the males i don't think there has been really major benefit even in the lung cancer high risk group there also the role of screening is doubtful only where place where it has been very helpful there is a psa level for prostate cancer after the age of 50 all of us should the males should get the psa done every year and that can really save the life because we see nowadays so many uh, stage 1 limited stage disease and they are getting cured completely 
thank you sir thank you so much uh, one question for goel sir so after bariatric surgery there are a subset of people who regain a significant amount of weight after some years so for these people who have regained the weight is their risk now again same as a normal obese person of getting cancers amrit we i don't i have not seen any study of this kind the challenge challenge of these studies are especially in risk of cancer is very simple you take a subset of patient and you have to have a control group so 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 otherwise you will not know how much the risk has reduced so now you have two groups and you need to follow them for at least for 10 years to find that the number of cancers in this group is 150 another group is 120 or 130 or 100 so to find this in people who have gained 10 kgs or 15 kgs and to follow them for 10 years is probably uh, uh, i don't foresee such kind of uh, one can make a assumption but one can will not be scientific in that so i and the and the fact remains that even with weight regain uh, most of the metabolic changes persist so if somebody has gained 5 kgs or 10 kgs the insulin resistance doesn't go up right. so there will be still some benefit of bariatric surgery in terms of hormonal changes uh, in those patients so uh, to put it simply i don't have the answer for this question okay. thank you sir uh, adwani sir there are two questions they are kind of similar one question is do like there is, we believe that when you get cancer you are going to automatically lose weight is it so do all cancers lead to weight loss and the second thing is in a normal person how much of unintentional weight loss should alert you to undergo examination yeah i think weight loss is one of the common symptoms of uh, the cancer and all of us uh, uh, you know we get uh, sort of uh, signal that weight loss we call it unexplained weight loss see that's very important to understand If somebody is a diabetic or he is obese and he is trying to lose a weight, uh, you can't say that that because I mean we have to search for the cancer. He is intentionally reduced this thing. Uh, it so happens sometimes we see occasionally such patient. He says, "Well, he thought that he is uh, losing weight because he had an intention of losing the weight, and he lost the weight and didn't bother about it, and then came with the advanced cancer." But that's very really rare. So I think unexplained weight loss definitely should be uh, looked into it. We know the there are certain types of uh, the heart, uh, cytokines which are secreted by the tumor, and they produce the anorexia and the weight loss. In there. And uh, second question: Are there any cancers where we don't see much weight loss? Oh, there are many. One of the thing is a uh, neuroendocrine tumor and uh, uh, stage 4 extensive liver metastasis they are absolutely fit and fine walking moving zero weight loss so the many cancers uh, i just gave you one example where the weight loss is almost nil so i don't think that uh, the weight loss is there in all the cancer but in fact we know some of the cancer is always there like colon cancer weight loss is very very common stomach cancer weight loss is common not in the lung cancer is rare in the lung cancer so we know roughly so if the patient comes to me and uh, he is pancreatic cancer severe weight loss so a patient comes to me he has got a extensive liver metastasis and i find him he is healthy i know that this is not a adenocarcinoma of pancreas is probably neuroectodermal tumor of the pancreas so uh, all of us develop the sixth sense whereby we can diagnose and sometimes people who are not worked in this area when i tell them like that they get surprised that you could diagnose uh, on clinical basis and you don't it's a it's a just a fact that how it's related to the weight loss Certain cancers have a weight loss. Many cancers don't have the weight loss. So I think that's a very clear message for all of us. We always have this myth 
that weight loss equal to cancer and if you are healthy then you cannot be having a cancer i think you have very clearly stated that uh, there is one more question how what advice do you give to people with cancer to improve their immunity like if they are going to undergo chemotherapy or post chemotherapy i think the word immunity most of the people don't understand yeah. i am telling you nobody understand what is immunity all these people you go to the ayurvedic homeopathy say what are you giving oh i am giving the patient the immunity to increase his immunity so what are you increasing what <laughs> so they don't understand only yeah. they have heard the name immunity and therefore they use the english word without knowledge so i think immunity uh, cancer patient if you look at it carefully and i have seen lack of patient they don't have lack of immunity it's a myth that they have lack of immunity where the cancer patient comes with a recurrent pneumonia never right where they come with a recurrent urinary infection or recurrent uh, colon infection never so there is no immunity loss what is loss probably is the immunity directed towards the tumor tissue yeah, that is one factor and we know now that how it is lost we have understood the mechanism there is a factor called pdl1 and pdl1 is a checkpoint inhibitor and pdl1 is over expressed by the tumor tissue and because of that the our immune mechanism is unable to locate the tumor tissue and the tumor grows you understand so i think uh, people have to understand that we are not trying to there is no immunity loss it's a tumor specific immunity which is impaired and therefore the patient develops the cancer and so uh, apart from serum psa are there any blood tests you commonly recommend for screening apart from psa yeah yeah of course i think you know like for liver cancer we do alpha fetoprotein for testicular cancer alpha fetoprotein and beta hcg for pancreatic cancer ca19.9 for colon cancer we use uh, the cea carcino embryonic antigen and there are many uh, for breast 15.3 and they are not uh, really specific but uh, they are more helpful to follow up and see the response to the treatment okay. thank you so much sir i think i have covered most of the questions there are a few related to how obesity affects the cells formation which i think you covered very clearly in your presentation <clears throat> so i think most of the questions are covered uh, dr goel sir any final remarks from your end sir please unmute sir uh, yeah amrit i think uh, it was one of the most uh, informative webinars that we have done and uh, one thing that i would like to ask dr adwani in continuation of his last answer he mentioned these uh, the the tumor markers uh, they are more for follow up so they have a, just to make it very clear to the audience they have no role in detecting a cancer as a screening tool sir is it clear uh, yeah that... to some extent i see basically i can tell you that suppose one of the tumor marker is positive i will never diagnose that this is a disease i say suspicious so you do other test imaging technology biopsy and prove it before just making the diagnosis on that uh, this is a marker raised and therefore diagnose clear cut let us start the treatment not at all that will not be acceptable not only in the upfront situation but also even for the relapse situation even the patient when get the relapse and relapse diagnosis is based only on ca on a marker not acceptable you have to show something relapse that physical imaging then only you call it so yeah. there are limitation of all these mark yeah so thank you so much sir that was a wonderful explanation of all the issues related to obesity and cancer and uh, i am sure you know this will help uh, a lot of people who and the family physicians 
who are uh, in a day to day practice seeing patients who are coming with hypertension with diabetes at a young age young girls and boys who are 18 20 year old and uh, they are obese to at least emphasize that it's not only their blood pressure or periods which are important uh, it's also long term risk uh, they can emphasize to the parents that the, the long term risk of cancer can be reduced so amrita uh, uh, please uh, uh, over to you so thank you sir uh, dr advani sir any, any final few words from you i think i really learned a lot about the bariatric surgery you know normally we know don't know much because we hardly listen uh, at the subject which is but i think it's good that we know now and uh, i mean uh, how many things for the obesity for us the treatment was diet control and today i have learned that how the surgery can also effectively control the obesity so thank you very much for the opportunity thank you so much advani sir yours was a very enlightening talk and an eye opener for most of us i should say and it was very lucid so everything is like crystal clear thank you goel sir for your talk thank you everyone for joining us we will be seeing you again next friday and that is going to be your talk a webinar on obesity and pulmonary disorders so we hope to see you then take care everyone thank you for joining us thank you thank you, thank you.